Hello, Calvin. Welcome to the Profit Planner Podcast. Haley, thank you so much for having me. I'm pumped to be here. Yes, and I'm so excited because, guys, Calvin is a speaker. He's an amazing speaker, by the way, and he's also an author. And oh my gosh, you have to look at his book on Amazon. I love it. It's like the fish out of water. But Calvin and I met through, yes, he's holding it up. So if you're watching on YouTube, Fish Out of Water, it's that book on Amazon. He just held it up. Um, it's funny that you had it right by your side. Yeah, it's right there. That was perfect. <laughs> We met at an event that our friend, our mutual friend, Michelle Lewis ran, and we both spoke at it. And man, when Calvin spoke up first, I spoke right after Calvin. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to follow this guy. <laughs> like, what the crap? But he was so good. He was so good. He's, he's such a powerful storyteller. So I'm glad that you're on the show. And I know this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And we just jive. I mean, we just jive for what, 15 minutes, even pre-podcast. We're like, oh, wait, we yeah. have a show to do. So yeah. I guess that's just what happens when you when two entrepreneurs that are both going after it, like we just bounce ideas off of each other. So we're basically besties, so yes. no big deal. <laughs> yeah, you just need to move a little bit closer, get out of Arkansas and come a little bit closer to the west. I know. Yeah, now I'm gonna move near Calvin, so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but I am excited because Calvin right now is running a social media management business, right? Mm. And yes. you're looking and you're, you're really using VA strategically. So can you talk a little bit about what you do before we move into how you incorporate VAs to save a load of time? Yeah. So how my agency is different than most is I know that you do Facebook ads and stuff like that, right? Like for your business or for other people's business, I do zero ads. Like mm -hmm. in my, agency. we Fourth. do like, yeah, we do no paid anything. The pretty awesome. much the, the main thing that we do is we create consistent branded content for our clients so that they're being out there consistently. So we are creating content for them around the clock. So they're getting at least two posts on Instagram or Facebook every single day, seven days a week. So even if they're busy running their business, their audience, their existing audience and people around them are seeing them so that they start building up a brand like they're serious. Cause if you look at the, pe the people that we follow, like in the entrepreneurial space, like a Ty Lopez, Gary Vaynerchuk or Lewis Howes, or these people that have a good brand, they are posting consistently. Like they're out there. So when you're out there that often, you start to be noticed and be taken more seriously. So that's kind of the approach we take. Um, so we solve the, that problem, that I guess headache, we love it, but for most of our clients, it takes a lot of time to create enough content to be out there every single day, twice a day, seven days a week. So we take that off their plate, get clear on who they are and create content for them and post it on their behalf. Nice. Yes. I love that you're, you're so focused on organic. You know, a lot of what I used to do when I ran an agency was web design because that's what I majored in in college. So I did web design, branding, all that stuff. And I had a team, but I was a little bit scared to go into social media because it is so time consuming and it, there's so much strategy involved. Now paid advertising, I'm all about that, but organic. Mm -hmm. whew. <laughs> it's uh, definitely more time consuming. I mean, especially in the beginning, like I remember being afraid to get a new client. Like I would want yeah. to grow my business or scale my business. But in the back of my mind, I was like, but if I get another one, it's <laughs> so much more work. So yes. yeah, it definitely is pretty intensive. Okay. Now you're at that point where you're like, oh, I want another client, but I don't want to do the more work and then enter in VA right? Is yes, that how it happened? That's exactly how it happened. So okay, nice. in fact, I wasn't, I wasn't even in quite, it, yeah. So it was to the point, like, I didn't even know if I had enough money to mm -hmm. have a VA, but it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Like having somebody else, because again, I was in it, creating all the content, doing all the picture quotes, making sure their logo was on it. Right. And I didn't know if I had enough margin because I was still new as an entrepreneur trying to get it going. But it was so smart in retrospect to do that because it freed so much headspace um, that I had like just focusing on all the details to make something happen. And so it's to the point now where I do zero fulfillment. I don't touch anything of anyone that, that comes on board. But one thing that I think um, might be useful for anybody that, that's considering VAs is mm -hmm. a, a question people ask all the time is where do you find them? And how do you make sure they're good? How do you get somebody that you can actually hire? First of all, YVAs, first of all, super talent. 
you're basically taking advantage of the fact that we have the internet and we live on this big ball, this globe, because you can pay someone US $5 an hour and they will love you um, in different parts of the world. And they have the internet and so they have mad yes. skills. So yes. So that's what, that's what that is taking advantage of. So it's perfect for a new growing entrepreneur. So where do you find VAs? Some people look on like Upwork and things of that nature. But what I did what was recommended to me by a mentor that I'm really glad I did is I actually used a service, something called virtual staff finder. Hmm. So if you go to virtual staff finder, you can find this. And with the virtual staff finder, what you do is they find the perfect person for you. They do all the sourcing for you. The only thing you have to do is get super clear on what you want. So that's, what's awesome is I could say, Oh, I want a social media director. And I use that word director on purpose because I wanted them to find somebody that had experience in social media. And if they had some like director title, then I figured, well, maybe they had done something like this before. So I wrote social media director, and then you write out all the things that they must have experiences in this and Photoshop and all this. And then with virtual staff finder, by the way, it's 500 bucks for them to do this service for them to go find your perfect person. So fairly affordable, especially for, like finding somebody that's going to take so much work off your plate. They go do all the sourcing. They look around all these different applications. Then they actually connect with several of them on your behalf. And after doing that and weeding through it at the end, they end up giving you three people that you then will interview. So at the end, they did all the work and they give you three people. You have everything on these three people. You have their, their typing tests, their language skills, um, their personality type, like everything that you could possibly have in this person besides like the resume and the experience they have. You get given that on a silver platter and then you do an interview with one of the three people and, or with each of the three people. And then at the end of the interview, you just at, um, decide which one that you pick. In fact, I've done this a couple rounds now. Um, the first round, I did just that. I t interviewed the three and picked one, and she's still with me. She's so good. Um, I still can't believe how talented she is. Um, she's way better than I ever was um, with it, and it's so crazy. Um, I, I'm just so lucky to have her. But anyway, I got her on board. Her name's Jade. But then after her, I needed somebody else, and then they gave me three people. And all three of them were pretty good. So I was like, I'm just going to hire all three of them. So that's what I did. Um, <laughs> I love so, it. I love it, Calvin. You're like, yeah. I like all of you. Let's bring you all on board. <laughs> exactly. So, so that, that is what has given me a little bit of freedom and headspace in this crazy world of entrepreneurship and growing my business. Um, so my m main thing has been like getting out there. You and I joked a little bit before the show, like how we're like, we love the lights. We love like we're the face of our business. That's really true. So I like to like go out and like greet people, um, get clients by being the face and then I can kind of hand it off and let them take it from there. So that's kind of how I'm running it at this point. Nice. Okay. Can you walk through what each of your VAs is actually doing and helping? Like how are they helping you in your business? So how the process works, I have somebody that's not really a VA, but kind of, but she's in the same town. So the main thing since we're creating content is we need to make sure if we're creating content every day, how, how do we know what type of content is going to fit that client, right? How do we know it's going to be in their voice? Cause it needs to look like it's actually coming from the client. That's something that we pride ourselves on is your people won't know the difference. In fact, they'll sometimes feel like that they, they're, they're getting to know you even deeper. And how we do that is the first step is we do something called a deep dive. And a deep dive is just a process that I developed that um, uh, helps us understand what somebody's, either their individual self or their business, what their core values are. So that's the first thing they help me with. I used to spend that, I would spend so much time getting a new client onboarded, but then we would have to do this deep dive. The deep dive can take about three hours. Um, but now I just hand that off. So that's the first process, deep dive to get the core values. Once the core values are gathered, um, and in the deep dive, we have other things, branding concepts like what colors they like, maybe we got their logo and our photos they use, and then all that content just goes to a designer who is a, a VA, one of the VAs that I hired. And that VA then creates a cover photo, 
um, make sure they have a good logo and everything, creates their first five pieces of content and stuff like that. And then after that's done, the VA is good enough. She then is an interaction with the client, copies me on the email and says, here's your stuff just waiting for the go ahead. The, if there's any minor adjustments, the client can just reply back and say, can you make the cover, excuse me, the cover photo look like this or the logo look like this. And then once we get the green light, then that VA can then just continue to create content that looks similar to that. It does the captions and everything. And I just step back and see it happen. Okay, all I'm hearing right now is streamlined systems and I have hearts in my eyes. I love that. So I think it's important to note that before you had the VAs, you really knew your system. You knew that the first step, the first phase, and like this is what I would do is I would see, okay, what is your service? Right now, think about what your service is. So if it's like web design, branding, whatever that is, and then split that service into phases. What does that process look like? Yes. He had his deep dive phase, his content gathering phase, his client management phase, approval phase. Like those are all different phases. Okay, now look at one phase at a time. He goes, okay, this is how they are going to do this. He could create a tutorial video using Use Loom. It's a free Chrome tool. Totally. Yeah, like that and so easy. You can create your onboarding process for the VAs, really create those checklists the streamlines the oh yes for sure yes Love and it. I could do and I've fallen into this and it, and it came out of necessity um, because I was so overwhelmed with with juggling everything um, but like I I want to do this now that I've now that I've actually seen it now I, I'm, I'm starting in thinking of systems I'm starting thinking in processes and since you mentioned systems there's a book that sent, I don't know if you've read it but if people are looking like how to like break it into phases and stuff like that. This book is phenomenal for mm -hmm. this. It's called Built to Sell. Built to Sell? Okay. Who is it by? Do you remember? I can't remember who it's by. I am shocked up. that you haven't read it. You're gonna, I haven't. You're just going to, you're going to read it and just be like, yes, yes, yes. It's a, uh, it's a, fi it's a fictitious story around somebody that wants to sell their ad agency and how there's, it wasn't built to sell. And this mentor helps him design it to build to sell. And that's a major thing is like breaking it down into pieces, like getting it very streamlined, very systematized. Um, Ooh, okay. You can do it better, fine tune it. Anyway, it's a, it's, it looks it, like it's written by John Warlow. I probably pronounced yeah. that wrong, but it says yeah, creating a business that can thrive without you. I'll link that up in the show notes guys. Yes. Yes. Built to sell. Definitely useful. Um, but yeah, uh, so now I want to, what I'm like, if, as I start to, like you and I touched on briefly, like I want to create my own like, uh, membership website or some program to help people get out of debt. And so now I'm starting from the beginning, whiteboarding it and being like, okay, what does the system look like? Cause once you have a system in place, you can always adjust it and fine tune it. You learn a lot just by jumping in, but, um, get a system down, then fine tune it. And then it can just stay streamlined and systematized without you. And of course, that's why we're mm -hmm. in entrepreneurship, right? Is for the freedom that our businesses can create for ourselves. So it's something I'm wanting to yes. think more about. It's like great new things. Yes, and I love that. And I think a lot of people, uh, when they think of VA, they think, oh, that's money out of my pocket. But if you think that's time back, that's how a CEO thinks anyways. I mean, if you wanna scale your business, uh, you're going to cap your income if you just do everything. You're going to burn out. You're wearing way too many hats. I mean, imagine if you really created this process from start to finish and then infused VAs. And, you know, I, I know you talked about, was it virtual staff finder? I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention this a little bit. But I've used onlinejobs.ph. And so mm -hmm. that is where you can connect with a lot of people that are 5 to $10 an hour VAs. Then you, it has all their skills there. I think it's uh, maybe $60 to sign up for an account. And then you get access to everyone that's on there. That's how I looked up programmers. Now, I didn't end up hiring any of the programmers. Uh, you have to be careful for sure. But I know James Wedmore, and I know a lot of you that listen to this podcast, I've heard of James Wedmore, um, but he had a VA from there and he paid her like three to five dollars an hour starting out. Now he pays her a lot more now, mm -hmm. um, but starting out seven years ago, that's all he paid and that helped him free up time to sell more, create systems, be a CEO. Totally. Like literally right now for context, for, for time, like right now I'm... I'm focused on, I'm doing a fun little project um, right now where I'm trying to get my first viral video. So I have a video that I'm getting 500 shares on it and then I'll see what happens. Um, I started it late yesterday. I, I think we're at 
130 shares or something. And again, so I, I haven't like seen this video. 370. You'll, you'll see it soon. I hope it pops up in your stuff. Maybe you can be uh, 131. Um, yeah, I but, will. <laughs> but um, to, to help get the shares last night, I started just private messaging, like grinding one-on-one. -on -one, say I'm asking people, Hey, would you share this? Um, but then I had to go to bed and then I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to message one of my VAs. And then I just messaged one of my VAs and was like, are you working on anything mission critical tonight? And she's like, no, not right now. And I was like, awesome. Do you want to help me out with something? And so while I was asleep, she then just followed what I said to do and still messaged people as me saying, hey, would you share this? And so now I could sleep and get my time with sleep and still have my VA helping me get a project done that I'm working on. So yeah, it's kind of cool when you can have, when you can, uh, use your time like that and get it back. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you have two sets of hands instead of one. So yeah, love that. Okay, now can I ask you, um, how much are you paying them? Because are you paying yeah. them per project? Or are you paying them per hour? Oh, oh. How does that work? It's all hourly. Um, okay. My VAs range between five and seven an hour. What? So, yeah, so fairly low. Where yeah. do they live? Philippines. Yeah. Okay. Onlinejobs.ph. A lot of uh, the workers there are in the Philippines, but to them, that is what is the equivalent? And I forgot the numbers, but that's like I don't know the equivalent. I don't know the equivalent, but they've all so, stayed with me, um, so they love it. Um, there's the one that has been with me now for almost two years. She's coming up on her on her two year thing. I'm doing like a fifteen percent bump um, every year. Um, but yeah, so they must be loving it if they're sticking around. I haven't had a single VA leave actually. Nice. Well, that says a lot about you though, too. I, and you're just naturally a good leader. So that doesn't surprise me at all, but appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Now I do have one. I have one more question. I say one more question, but you know, I'm going to have more. So <laughs> I'm just not even going to say that, but how are you managing the communication? I think this is also Skype. a big thing. Skype. Okay. That yeah. answer surprised me. So so a couple ways. First of all, every so reports are huge, and this is something I could get better on. But this is something I learned from somebody that, that talked about scaling from being more of an employee to more of a uh, to, or from a manager, like in a day job, because that's where I came from. I was in more of a management position to a CEO, and was like to make that switch, you need to switch to reports. Like reports are everything. Reports and numbers. So my VAs send me a report at the end of their shift every day. Now, I'll be straight up, I don't read that hardly ever right now. I could do better, but just to hold them accountable and stuff like that, they have to send me the report of what they did and how long they worked, like how long each main task was. Um, so they send me a report and then we're in communication through Skype, just because that's where it all started. Skype's easy to contact with people anywhere in the world. And so we'll like message through there or FaceTime through there and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, they send me that report. And then when I pay them, I pay them. Some Many of them are used to getting paid just once a month, but I, I'm like, I'll pay you twice a month. Um, and so on the 16th and the first of every month they then send me the overall report of what they did and like breaking it down and stuff like that so that's how we keep communication email on the reports and then skype nice nice that's actually really cool so how are they tracking their time they aren't um i'm trying to do something where it's like where i'm trusting it and so one of the things that i do is i have them measure something like i have a va that's doing my podcast for example and a number that I just invented, it's probably not an invention, but I want to know like uh, the ratio of how many hours you worked per episode that was published um, during that pay period. So I have that number. So I see, get an idea of how many hours it's taken you per episode because that should get really close. And then right now we're like, okay, it's at five or whatever, or it's a little bit over, it's closer to six. What can we do to get that to five? Because I want to actually get that number to where um, I think we can we can tighten the processes down to where it takes less than three hours to produce a full episode post production, you know, um, so that it can be done, thumbnails done, everything put up where it needs to go. So that's the the way that I'm managing it. With that said, here's an, something else that somebody else, that what most people do. 
because there are tracking tools. In fact, I think one of my VAs, because she was used to it, does track it using some plugin on Chrome or whatever. Um, I never even look at it. But some people, or what a lot of VAs do is you just pay them like a part-time wage or a full-time wage, and it doesn't matter how many hours they work. You just say that this is your salary, you know. So that's pretty common too. But I like hourly, so that's what well, I have it set yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, and at five to seven dollars an hour, <laughs> why wouldn't you like hour? Like, yeah. who cares? Even if they, even if they do end up fudging their time two hours, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, big <Right>. deal. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So, um, if a time tracker tool that I've used is called Toggle, T O G G L. And it's free. And so it's a desktop app that you can literally just start Uh and stop. Yeah. So that's great. So they Um, they start and stop it when they're working. They start it when they're done working. They stop it. Yes. And actually a podcast listener told me about that. I believe it was Celia, who's one of the listeners of the show. So she told me about that tool and oh my gosh, it's been a lifesaver. Um, And then for my communication, I'm so big on Slack, but I think that your team is a little bit different than my team or my team, our communication it's, Slack would be good for all the different projects that right. you're working Right. We're more project-based. And, you know, with the membership, we're making sure, like, if someone's in the chat box and I can't get to them and, you know, Crystal's in there, well, Crystal has to Slack me to get an immediate answer and it shows up on my phone. So ours is more, oh, we're just going to chat throughout the day, where yours is more, okay, we have a system yeah. process. We're just going to go through it. Well, here's the thing. This is why we have these conversations, too. I, I might – it might be a good idea to do something like Slack or if I go deeper in this, like to, to update something beyond Skype. So I actually appreciate that. I might look into Slack. Oh, Slack is amazing. You will yeah, love it. Everybody, all my friends use it. Um, yeah. I just need to get more serious with looking into it. Yeah, for sure. And it's pretty easy to set up. I have different channels. So I have a channel for each specific person. So a channel for Crystal, a channel for Lauren, and a channel for Maddie. And then we have a channel for all of us, which is our team channel. So if I have a big update or announcement, that's where I put that. So yeah, that, that's, that's how I manage communication. Um, and then also for team meetings, I love that you're doing reports. So I'm not doing reports. Um, I'm doing team meetings every week. So on Thursday mornings, we have our meeting. Uh, and then from there, they, they give me reports. I'll have like expectations and then we'll chat over any questions they have. And it's just our little, uh, that's meeting just all virtual. yeah, it's, it's on zoom. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How so that's what we do generally go, um, 30 minutes. Uh, so I took the 90 day year by Todd Hermit and he said to keep those meetings to 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It is three girls. You cannot keep a three girl meeting to 10 minutes. Let's face it, especially with me. So <laughs> sometimes it's 30 to 45 30 minutes, minutes is actually pretty good. 30 minutes I, you, pretty I'm a very efficient person, but I am a little bit of a chatty Kathy. <laughs> yeah. So I could, I could do something more like that too. And especially as I start doing other things and building out like a membership um, site and things of th- that nature that I want to do. I think team meeting does make it feel a little bit more real and it brings all the other people because it brings everybody on board too, that they're like, they're part of something greater because it can make, it can feel like silos because my social media person is doing different things than my podcast person, you know? So it might be cool to like bring everybody in and like have a conversation that way. So I yeah, like and it lets them see their little piece of the puzzle. And it's like, man, yeah. if I do my piece of the puzzle the best, look at what we're creating together. And you know, I've done a lot of leadership training on how to encourage your VAs or team members to really work the best for you. And I think at the end of the day, they don't care about the money the company's making. I mean, why would they? They don't care. Mm-hmm. They I think the big thing is to make sure you encourage them and make them feel so loved and appreciated, which is natural for me, but I know a lot of people out there like that might not be natural for you who's listening to this thinking, oh, I've never hired a VA or I have one, but I feel like I need to motivate her more. It's like, make sure that they know that they are so appreciated and you are so thankful for them because you are, they're saving you so much time. So oh, yeah, I couldn't do what I do without them. I couldn't go yeah. on the trip the traveling or anything if it wasn't being run by other awesome people. So yeah. And the fact that you get, what was it? A six event? A six event travel. Yeah. yeah. You went on that. Grant Cardone's, let me see. What were they? Grant Cardone's traffic conversion, social media marketing world. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yasmin's event, uh, Amplify. 
um, Austin, Texas, South by Southwest, and then Funnel Hacking Live in Orlando. So yeah, six. And you're and you're running an agency through that whole time, and you're. I mean, that's just insane that you have that much time to go to all those events and you have time to network and be a CEO instead of sitting at your home alone in your office and uploading all that content for your clients. Yeah. 100%. It'd be really, really easy to do that. But what I'm hoping is, is by, by getting out and like making that sprint, I don't think I'm going to even go to that many events the rest of the year. We'll see. Because <laughs> um, that, but uh, luckily they're all right there. But hopefully it was enough where people see my face now though that it's like brand build for whatever comes next. So that's the aim. Nice. Nice. I love it. I think that you have given so much awesome information. And one last thing I do want to ask is I know a big thing is giving up control. How are you going to make sure that the quality is there when hiring? I think that's such a good question because that's the big fear, right? Um, is you're afraid that it's going to dip in quality. Um, the only thing I could, the only thing I could get to myself to do conceptually is I had to be okay with dipping in quality to let go mentally. But that was the thing. Cause I was like, Oh, there's just no way nobody can, can do this better. Like, so I was like, well, I need more time because if I have more time, then I can make systems that are going to be better. But in giving up control, I find this person Jade that is literally like five times better than I was. Um, so at the very least, I think that's where you have to get to mentally is at least in the beginning, like be okay with realizing that you're the best and there might not be somebody that can do it quite as well, but maybe they'll surprise you. Maybe they can, because if you have, if you can take a step back, then you can do what's talked about in a book like the E-Myth Revisited or Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You can work on your business now instead of in your business. And when you can work on your business, then you can build the systems the way you want. You can serve your clients in a much greater way um, when you're not just so bogged down as the CEO. So, I think you just ended that so perfectly. I, I can't, I don't even want to follow it up with anything because I, that was so, that was so perfect. There we go. <laughs> it's the whole reason we do it. Yes. Yes. I I'm so glad that you came on and thank you for being so transparent. I seriously appreciate it because all this information is so helpful. And I know that if you want to scale your business, you have to think like a CEO, you have to hire, you have to do those things. And I'm just appreciative of you for giving all of your amazing wisdom to, to well, us. Haley, we're in this thing together. So I hope we can give some insights to people that are just maybe a half a step behind to save them yes. some time. Yes, that's what we're here about, saving time. Okay, now, where can everyone stalk you? Um, social media is the very best way. Um, so if you're on Facebook and Instagram, um, that's the best place to find me. If you want us to do something cool, if you're we're like, hey, uh, I want to take my social media to the next level and we're giving away a free audit right now, you can give that, go, get that at socialmediamakeover.org. Uh, so with that, that's going to be either me personally or someone on my team will reach out to you and help you rip apart your Facebook to give it a facelift. Um, so you can get that at socialmediamakeover.org so you can connect with me that way. Otherwise, um, Facebook and Instagram just by searching Calvin Wayman. Nice. And we'll include all the links to connect with Calvin in the show notes as well. Again, thanks so much for being on the show. I love it chatting with you. We always have so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Hope to bump into you face-to-face -face, uh, sometime this year. That'd be nice. Oh, yes. We'll make it happen. <laughs>